the property that slaves built that was a, once a Confederate army base. Think about the poetic justice in that. The Confederate army is fighting to keep Negroes enslaved, enslaved in America, fighting strategy, planning on this very ground. And now this very ground is owned by me. Be inspired. From the corner of your mind, don't you think it's time to let everybody know that you're down with the show? Be inspired. We listen to these stories because it has to be told. It's about inspiration. I think you will be whole. Tyler Perry, a man who's doing his part. He's the owner of a production studio that's off the charts. An American inspiration that's all about the arts. I'm David Austin Naylor of Get Ready Productions with another edition of Be Inspired. Because all things are possible if you believe. Tyler Perry is a creative force behind 22 movies, 20 plays, eight TV shows. He's very busy. The 50-year-old writer, director, and actor told us what inspires him to think big. The star-studded grand opening of his new film studio is quite literally a dream come true for Tyler Perry. I'm gonna tell you something. There was a moment that happened in 2005 at the Legends Ball. I promise you, and I wish people would really- That's Oprah's Legends Ball. Oprah's yeah. Legends Ball, yeah. She invited me there. My movie had just come out. Diary of a Black Woman had just come out. First movie. Not a lot of people knew me in the room. And I'm sitting there wondering, what am I doing in this room? And Yolanda Adams is sitting next to me. I think I said it out loud, because she goes, you belong in the room. Leaving there, seeing it, touching it, tasting it, feeling it, the excitement of what it meant to see a woman, a black woman, be able to do that spoke to me in so many ways. And I'm on video saying, listen, in my Cartier glasses, my zoot suit thinking I'm looking great. I said, I'm just absolutely floored. And, and my thing leaving here, I'm gonna dream bigger and dream more. And it opened me up to believing anything is possible. In many ways, it seems to me like you're just getting started. Yep. Does it feel like that to you? Yeah, because at 28, I went into this shell because I started touring during 300 something shows a year. Why do we make us pray harder? Watch this. Hallelujah! <laughs> so somewhere around 44, 45, I came out of it. And I go, wait a minute, where did all those years go? So now I feel like I'm still 35. So I feel like I'm just getting started. I really, there's nothing about me that feels like 50, whatever that's supposed to mean. Everything I've done for the last five, seven movies has been done here. The land that is now Tyler Perry Studios sits on 330 acres with 12 sound stages. There is even a replica of the White House, where he films his new show, The Oval. This is The Oval Office. It looks just like it does on TV, Tyler. Mm -hmm. But before Perry brought Hollywood to Atlanta, this was once Fort McPherson military base a Confederate stronghold. The property that slaves built that was a, once a Confederate army base. Think about the poetic justice in that. The Confederate army is fighting to keep Negroes enslaved, enslaved in America, fighting strategy, planning on this very ground. And now this very ground is owned by me. It's an extraordinary accomplishment for Perry, whose journey includes overcoming abuse during his childhood and at one point losing everything, including his home. But now his ride to work is a reminder of how far he has come. What did that mean to you to see that on the highway? And it's a bona fide highway sign. What yeah. that mean? Yeah, first time I saw it, it was next to Sylvan Road, which I remember when I moved to Atlanta, I moved off of Sylvan Road with my cousin and got put out of house, had no money, that kind of thing. So I'm looking at Sylvan Road. And then to see my name next to that moment, I just, it, it took me, it took my breath away. People know your story. You were homeless. You, you literally slept in your car. Mm -hmm. You're 6'5". What kind of car was it? Geo Metro. Pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> That's about this size of this the, chair. This chair. That's right. Convertible. But Tyler, what is it that you think that this happened to you that you do really well, that you're really proud of? I work very, very hard. I, this, this entire um, journey of telling stories was born out of pain, born out of heartache. 
born out of uh, being an abused kid who could go inside of his head and create a world and imagination. Also, that same abused kid watching his mother, it's nothing like a boy child. I don't know what it's like for a girl, but a man child watching his mother getting beaten and there's nothing he can do. My desire and heart to make her laugh and feel better was so strong and, you know, if I could make a joke or if I could imitate her or my aunt and make her laugh or some of the women she would play cards with on Friday nights, all of that was so powerful and so important to me. Today, Perry is a parent himself, and while he is very much in the public eye, he makes a point of keeping his four-year-old son, Aman, out of the spotlight. You have called him a healer for yeah, you. for real. What do you mean by that? Because I look at him and it, I'm looking at myself at that age, and I'm wondering how anybody could be cruel and unkind to this this level of pure innocence and beauty and it, it and it, love and love. Yeah. I, I had to discipline him one day because he was having a problem with the uh, nanny, and he was just cutting up. And he's just in the bathroom. He doesn't want to brush his teeth, and he goes. So I open the door, and he just freezes and he looks at me. And I asked the nanny to leave, and I sat down with him, got down eye to eye, and I'm talking to him. And as I'm talking to him, I'm, I'm realizing I really need to run out of the room because I'm about to start crying. I'm talking to him, I'm telling him how much I love him, how much his mom and I love him, and how disrespectful this is and how disappointed I am that he is behaving this way. He's much smarter than this. You're such a smart kid, why are you doing this? You can't behave this way because other kids do that. This is not what you do. It's not what we do as parents. We teach you better than this. So I'm trying to finish and he's just crying and shaking and trying to calm down. I say, Papa, I'm so sorry, I'm trying to calm down. I've run out of the room, right, uh, be without him noticing it because it broke me. I realized that nobody had ever talked to me like a person as a child. Nobody had ever talked to me like a human being, right? So that's what I mean when I say my, my healer. I'm every, mm -hmm. <laughs> every time I talk to him, every time I hug him, mm -hmm. every time I love him and let him know he's special, I'm, there's something in me that's being healed. I so get that, yeah. Tyler. What do you want your legacy to be? I, I would love for my son First of all, just to be an amazing person. You talk so lovingly about Amon. Is it impolite to say, can you now have a little baby girl? Very. <laughs> Very rude. That's rude. <laughs> Check out GetReadyProductions.com and buy some of your gifts from a small business. Support the people who think like you so we can all live the American dream.